Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us in all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gifts of salvation for ourselves. Make us humble. Cast away our transgressions and turn us again to life in you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need. And through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, and led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
You have prepared a table before all peoples and poured out your life with abundance. Call us against your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just and pure, and transform us into people of righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading, a reading from Isaiah 25, verses 1 through 9. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old faithful and sure. For if you've made the city a heap, the fortified city of ruin, the palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless na nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and the shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter storm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with the shade of the clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine stain, strained clear. And he will destroy on the mountain the shrow that was cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the distress of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. God's word coming to us. Thanks be to God. to Matthew, the 22nd chapter, verses 1 through 14. One, once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent another slave, saying, Tell those who have been invaded, look, invited, look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is rated, ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed their murderers, and burnt their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets, and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the street and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. 
But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man. He noticed a man who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him head and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. God's word coming to us. Thanks be to God. Hi, St. Paul. Welcome to Time with Children for this week. This week's Bible lesson we are focusing on is a lesson from the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament from chapter 25. Isaiah is a prophet and in these verses, he is talking to God. The verse that I want us to remember and focus on for today is this one. Isaiah says, for you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. Did you know that in our world and even in our own community in the Detroit area, many people cannot provide basic needs like shelter or refuge or food or things like that that they need for themselves and for their families. They require assistance and help from other people to take care of those needs. People who experience homelessness are found all over the world, whether in the country or in the city or even in the suburbs. The causes of homelessness are many. People throughout history have been uprooted and made homeless all around the world because of war, drought, or famine. In many countries, new settlers drove people from their homes and their native land, like here in the United States with the Native Americans. Today, many people face homelessness after losing their jobs because of unexpected medical expenses or due to rising housing costs in their neighborhood and in their area. Today, many people face homelessness because of losing their jobs and they can't get jobs sometimes because of discrimination. They're judged based upon the color of their skin, their social class, or their gender even. Whew, I know that's a lot. This month at St. Paul, we're learning all about homelessness and I've been learning a lot about it too. We are focusing on homelessness because we know that God cares about people who experience homelessness and that Jesus shared many times what it means to follow him is to care for people who are experiencing hard things like homelessness. In today's Bible verses, Isaiah, who is working to share God's message with his community, is taking the time to stop and pray and remember how amazing God is. Today, as we remember and reflect on those who are experiencing homelessness, we know of God's love for all people, and we give praise that God sends us to help provide shelter, refuge to the poor and needy, and address things like homelessness in our own communities. I encourage you to take time today to talk with your family and pray. Pray about how God is calling you to be God's hands and feet to those experiencing homelessness. Let's pray right now. Dear God, thank you for being the refuge and provider for all people. We know there is brokenness in the world and that this has caused many of our neighbors to be without housing and homes. We pray today that we can become educated and aware of these issues and we can have your hearts, your love in our hearts to go out and be your hands and feet, sharing your love and advocating for all people. Amen. Have a great week. As this season of the church has moved, we have tra transitioned out of the vineyard and found ourselves appropriately at the table, the harvest. The harvest has happened and we are here for the feast thereafter. 
It's not any feast. It happens to be the wedding. Not any wedding, but a wedding of the king's son, the next king. This parable is full of controversial and painful reality. Reality of a leadership and a group dynamics and the politics of the day. This is one of those passages so full of the issues that I'm just just overwhelmed by them all. So today, I'm going to focus on the robe. The person without the robe is the last line of people in the parable to shame the king. First, they send a, a first invitation. And there is a little to no, v, and there's some VR, VR, RSVP. And not surprised, like our cultures and theirs, the king, king needs a second, send a second invite. Now this one is met with lousy excuses and death. By the way, these people invited are the elites, the powerful people in the culture. The king's invite list would originally not include the commoner. So fed up with the shame, the king retaliates on them by a show of extreme force. For those who were first invited were not worthy, the scripture says. I, I really don't know who would want to come to this party after this. The king has obviously lost the trust of his closest leaders and elites. The scripture doesn't say why they have rejected, rejected the king's rule, but they have. Not attending the king's son's wedding was an act of civil disobedience. And it was met with a show of force and death. So being betrayed, the king shows those disloyal friends a thing or two. And he invites the common people. He either does this out of, they come, the commoners come out of either fear or loyalty. The commoners show up and they wear the robes. The robe. What about the robe? So glad you asked. Well, the robe was a sign in which told everyone at the party that you were meant to be there. They were given out at the entrance and marked your participation in the event. With the new guest list being, well, everyone, there was just a few reasons why this particular guest would not have a robe on. One, well... He took it off and lost it, maybe? Probably not. Two, he did not rightfully enter, like came in the back door or something like that. Or three, he's not wearing it so that others can see him, his status, and his clothing, not the robe, maybe. Or four, he's not wearing the robe as a sign of a continued protest against the king. Is this parable a continuation? The reason is probably saying that the person wasn't wearing the robe because of number four. four. When asked why he was not wearing the robe, he was given at the entrance. The guest is silent. This story affirms that the person is in fact a guest and a friend but the silence is a sign of his continued protest against the king. His silence responds to the king asking his friends where his robe is, is probably saying, you know why I'm not wearing your robe. His silence is again met by forth, force and bloodshed by the king probably because it is interpreted as a shameful act against the king. The response to the story by the priests and by the Pharisees is a deep desire to trap Jesus. 
They want to trap him in his own problems. And the cycle of Jesus convicting his listeners of their misdeeds and his hearers worrying about more about trying to trap Jesus and get rid of Jesus instead of actually listening to him. That cycle just continues over and over again. The guest and friend's refusal of the free gift of the robe and still showing up for the free dinner is the height of the rejection of the king. And the king wants nothing of it. The king and his people seem to be at an impasse. The people seem to be stuck in their need to reject the king. And the king seems to be stuck in defending his honor and his power before the people. And the cycle continues. Someone, something is going to have to give. Then there is the cross. The death and resurrection of Jesus shatters the revolving door of death and destruction that the shame and honor system provides. God gives. God gives and gives when the cross, with the cross and resurrection. God no longer needs to defend God's honor. God chooses to not even play the game of shame and destruction. God's name is grace, truth, and love. And this is what it means to be on the other side of the cross, on the other side of the grave, on the other side of the resurrection. In the shame game, many are called and few are chosen. But after the cross, we are the chosen. The world has been chosen. All of creation has been chosen and redeemed. And we are the chosen, not because of our loyalty, but because that is the kind of party and the kind of feast that God wants to have. God wants a feast that in the end is truly for everyone and not just a few. A feast that freely gives robes no questions asked. A feast that stops the fear and bloodshed of the shame and honor system and gives us a faith, gives us a faith full of love, hope, and peace. God chooses grace. Amen. Peace
With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious host, fill your worship with a spirit of joyous love. We pray for bishops, teachers, church leaders, and all children of God as they lead in your spirit. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious host, as creation awaits with eager longing for redemption, protect your creatures that are mistreated and oppressed. Restore valleys, mountains, and pastures, and still and running waters. Mend broken relationships and free oppressed people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious host, as you set a table in the presence of enemies, so bless the efforts of diplomats, international peace workers, and world leaders who navigate conflict. May they proceed with dialogue and understanding so that justice and peace prevail. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious host, let your gentleness be known among those who are weary or ill, especially Tom, Linda, Aloha, Henry, Ellen, Amy, Dorothy, Mary, Father John, Adam, Jessica, Robin, Tina, Sarah, Linda, Jean Ann, Richard, Bob, Matthew, Barney, Chad, Trish, Karen, Fred, Kathy, Harry, Lucille, Janice, Eleanor, Carl, Steve, Andrew, Jeff, and Robin and Philip. Strengthen doctors, medical care workers, and caretakers who see to their needs. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious host, when we are quick to judge outward appearance, remind us how you clothe all in your mercy. We pray for ministries that provide needy clothing and other personal care assistance in this community. We pray for Motor City Missions, Samaritas, Family Center, and Alternatives for Girls. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious host, as we remember those who have died and are gathered at the heavenly banquet, comfort us with your presence. Today we pray for the family of friends of Lucille Grensky. Assure us of your peace at all times. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share a moment of peace with each other through a deep breath. Amen. And we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Oh, now be 
Let us share our mission moment together, a prayer on homelessness. Let us pray. Hear our prayer today for all homeless, for those sleeping under bridges, on park benches, in doorways, or at bus stations, for those who can, find, can only find shelter for the night, but must wander in the daytime. For families broken because they could not afford to pay the rent. For those who have no relatives or friends who can take them in. For those who have no place to keep possessions that remind them of who they are. For those who are afraid and hopeless. For those who have been betrayed by our social safety net. We pray for those of us with warm houses and comfortable beds. May we not be lulled into complacency and forgetfulness. Jesus, help us to see your face in the eyes of every homeless person we meet, so that we may be empowered through the word and deed to bring justice and peace to those who are homeless. Amen. Receive this blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, depths, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.